Hello, Randy Rain here, and this is the first installment of my videos about building this little animatronic frog that is built around a pickaxe chip. I needed an MP3 player that the pickaxe chip could control, and it needed to be stereo because one side will have the audio and the other side will have DTMF tones, which is how you program the frog to make it move. But I found out a lot of these MP3 players are just mono and they're not stereo at all. Take, for instance, the DF Player Mini. It is completely mono. It does have a right and left audio output, but it's the same side. It's not even mixed down. It's just one track spread across the outputs. Now, the DF Player Pro is in stereo, but it didn't have what I want because I wanted an SD card and an audio jack output would be nice, but it uses at commands and I could not get it to work with the pickaxe chip. The only one I found that has an SD card, has an audio jack, and you can control it with a pickaxe chip, it's the SparkFun MY1690X-16S. You'd think they'd come up with a better name. Unfortunately, you can't find it on Amazon, but RoboShop and SparkFun have it. And this is a really nice board. It works really, really well. It's a little bigger than the other boards, but at least it's 100% stereo. So let me show you how to control it with a pickaxe chip. All right, the first thing we're going to do is set up one of these pickaxe chips. Eventually, I'll be using all the pins to this chip, but I'm not right now. And so, right now, I'm going to drop every one of them except the one that I need to ground. Okay, so right now, Eventually, I'll be using all the pins, but right now, I'm not. So, all the pins, except for this one and this one here, are going to ground. This one is, of course, going to positive. That's what powers the chip. And this one, which is B0, well, that's the serial out. And from there, it's going to this resistor, which is a 330 ohm resistor. And then it's coming over to here, and it's going to this blue wire, going into here, and it's going into the receiver here for the serial transmission for this MP3 player. There's also power going to it, the ground, and then you have the left and right speaker. And I have it hooked up a speaker here, and I can switch which side, left or right. So I should be able to program this chip to send a code out to play the single track that's on this SD card. So we're going to start off by telling it it's the Pickaxe 14M2. We're not doing any data, so it doesn't need to worry about that when it goes to sending the information to the chip. So the first thing to understand is that the Pickaxe chip runs at 8 megahertz. And that is too slow to do 9600 baud. You can change this. You can change the megahertz on these chips. You can change it to 4, 8, 16, or 32. And you need to change it to 16. And that's where this code comes in, the set freq. You want to make it M16. The output is B0. And so I'm going to put out nothing here. I'm just going to send it a 0. This wakes this pin up for ser out. Sending anything really through their serial the first time is going to wake it up. Okay, so now let's create some variables to help you understand. Okay, so there's two variables. There's the track. That's the easy one. That's the track that we're going to play. Put any number into that variable and it's going to play that track number. Then there's also CSUM, which is checksum. This is part of the communication. We'll get to this. Now, remember, everything's running double speed, so I am now going to pause it for 6,000. Normally, that would be six seconds, but it's actually three seconds now. That'll give everything time to boot up, and now I'm going to send the code to play that track, and it's this. It's going to send this code out right here. And this will tell you the track. And here's part of the communication. This is the checksum to make sure everything was sent correctly. And then this ends the transmission here. 
So every three seconds now, it's going to tell the player to play track one. I'm going to take my chip. I'm going to put it in my little programming thing here that I built. So now I should play this and it should play. So here we go. And so as you can see, it's not playing. And this is the problem that you run into. This is a logic analyzer. Ground it. So there's two grounds here, so that's ground. Then I'll use this. Go into this pin here. And then I'm going to plug it in. So let's look at it on the logic analyzer. I'll turn it on. That's because the clock of this chip and the clock that it's using to send the signal is the same clock. And these chips are not perfect, not even close. So the secret is this Calibrec here. I found a good Calibrec minus 15. That should do it. Some of them are more finicky than others, but this seems to be pretty good, so... Okay, so that's with the calibration, that should be everything. So if I look at the pulse view here, and now we can run it, turn it on. Well, first of all, there's frogs playing now every three seconds. And if we look at one of these codes, yep. That's the exact code, 70.05.41.0001, that's the track number. The checksum is 45, and then end frame. And there you have it. And so, the nice thing about this one is it is stereo. So if I plug it on this side and do it, Now you can hear the DTMF tones. Okay, so let's clean up this code a little bit. Let's move this up to here. Okay. Go here. We'll get rid of we'll get rid of this do loop. Uh-huh. Right, so now it's just going to play it once, and then let's pause for, oh, I don't know, let's see, there's at least 10 seconds, so we'll go 20,000. That should be 10 seconds. The signal to make it stop is this. So now it's going to play this. It's going to wait 10 seconds and then turn it off. Let's see this in action. Programming. Okay. Let's run pulse view and look at the signal that comes out. We'll turn it on. Well, that was it. It was a fast 10 seconds. Yep. That is the stop there. And over here. That was the play. Absolutely perfect.
Okay, let's do 30,000. Let's see just how fast we're going. Program that. I'll change it back to the frogs too. So we don't have to listen to the DTMF tones. All right, here we go. So that was only six seconds from what I counted. So 30,000 is actually just six seconds, huh? Okay, which is why you have to make your pauses a little bit longer for startup if you're running a higher frequency because the pause function is faster. It's definitely a lot longer. Ah, the lily is still. The air is thick with portent. I sense an audience. You've come seeking wisdom, haven't you? Or perhaps just shelter from the flies. Either way, you shall receive something. So that's the SparkFun MP3 player controlled by the pickaxe chip, which is how my little frog works. The next video is going to be about DTMF tones. Anyway, if you like this video or appreciate that it's just not a bunch of AI crap, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. I'd like to thank these people. These are the patrons. These are the people helping me out, and I couldn't do any of this stuff without them. So I thank them all so very much. And if you'd like to become a patron, of course, there are links and perks and everything. So go check it out. Anyway. Thanks for watching. I am Bogsworth, prophet of the pad, seer of the sludge. I have gazed into the murk and seen things that would make a heron weep. Time is but a ripple, and I am the frog who watches it spread. <laughs> the divine? Oh yes, I've communed with it. It smells like moss and speaks in riddles. Once it told me, Leap not toward the moon, lest you land in madness. I leapt anyway, I regret nothing.